uh, HMICS and Audit Scotland on police governance. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. The Audit Scotland report highlights a number of improvements made by the Scottish Police Authority and Police Scotland, whilst also highlighting areas that require to be addressed. In contrast to previous years, the auditor has not expressed a modified opinion, reflecting an encouraging improvement in the quality of accounting records and access to information. This is a key sign of progress. In addition, the Auditor General has highlighted that the process for setting the 2017-18 budget was more transparent and comprehensive, and that the development of three-year and ten-year financial strategies provides essential context and understanding for the organisation's future financial sustainability. The report also highlights issues where best value was not achieved and governance has been poor. I therefore welcome the commitment from the new chair of the SPA to learn lessons from the issues identified and to ensure that further improvements are made. I expect the SPA to respond to the issues highlighted and to drive improvement to ensure that further issues, that similar issues cannot happen again in the future. As HMICS has acknowledged, the findings of the report were based on a review in February to March 2017. Since then, the Joint Programme Board has made progress in a number of key areas. In particular, it has been agreed that officers and staff will retain their current terms and conditions, including access to their current pension scheme. The Board will publish a question and answer briefing for BTP officers and staff in Scotland this week. A progress report on the work of the Joint Programme Board was provided by the Minister for Transport and Islands to the Justice Committee on the 31st of October this year. Liam MacArthur. Yeah, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that uh, response. And the report uh, published last week, sadly, uh, just after the Liberal Democrat debate on policing, the Auditor General said that there had been, of course, a number of instances of poor governance and poor use of public money in the SPA and Police Scotland. Ms Garner uh, also warned that realising the policing 2026 vision will be, quote, immensely challenging and predicted the force would face financial trouble for many years to come. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with the Auditor General? Cabinet Secretary. Officer and officer, as I set out my initial question there, the Auditor General correctly highlighted a number of areas where performance within the SPA um, has not been as adequate as it should have been, in particular in terms of uh, the way in which it, uh, some of its governance operations have been taken forward and also in ensuring uh, best, best value. However, the member will also want to acknowledge the very significant progress that the Auditor General has also identified in improving the overall financial management within the SPA and Police Scotland, which is significant progress on the basis of the Section 22 that was issued the previous year. Alongside that, the uh, member is correct to say there will be challenges in taking forward uh, some of the financial uh, uh, aspects that are set out in 2026, but that's exactly why the financial strategy has been broken into key component parts, in particular the three-year strategy, uh, in order to make sure that the uh, organisation gets into financial balance, and then the work that will then be taken forward in delivering 2026 over the next uh, 10 years. So I do recognise there are challenges alongside this, but I think the member will also recognise that any reasonable person in reading the Auditor General's report will also acknowledge that significant improvements have been made in overall financial situation. Liam MacArthur. Thank you again. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for uh, that response? Can I turn perhaps to the issue of pay, payoffs and expenses? And the Justice Secretary may recall the First uh, Minister told the Conveners Committee of this Parliament recently some very important tests have to be applied. Public confidence is one and value for money and reasonableness are others. It is vital that they run through decision making. Does Mr Matheson therefore believe that paying uh, £67,000 in relocation expenses and £53,000 in tax liability for one senior officer, spending £345,000 on three appointments who were ironically meant to get the police's finances back in order, a golden uh, goodbye for the chief executive and the same chief executive offering a position to someone against procedures, withdrawing the offer, running an apparently open competition before disqualifying the competitors and installing the original appointee are in keeping with the tests set out by the First Minister. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, so let me um, uh, pick up on each of these uh, individual issues that the member has raised. In relation to the relocation expenses that were uh, made to a Deputy Chief Constable within uh, Police Scotland, the member will be aware that these were actually awarded in accordance with the terms of that individual's appointment at the time when they joined the organisation. And the SPA have already said that they are committed to reviewing the relocation uh, payment procedure in order to ensure that it delivers value for money in the future. And that, that matter has now been referred to the Police Negotiating Board because these relate to terms and conditions. 
uh, for police officers and that the police negotiating board have agreed to review the guidance and procedures relating to uh, removal expenses uh, for uh, police officers. In relation to the matter relating to the appointment of three individuals uh, to uh, key posts within the SPA and within Police Scotland, these were interim appointments which the SPA have now addressed uh, by making sure that they are taken forward as permanent appointments uh, in order to address the very concerns which have been raised by, uh, by the Auditor General in their report. And in relation to the uh, uh, package which was offered to uh, the former Chief Executive of Police Scotland, the SPA former Chief Executive uh, uh, retired under the terms of the SPA's early retirement scheme uh, that covers all SPS uh, staff rather than through any individual uh, settlement agreement. Now, of course, uh, that has to comply with the Scottish Public Finance uh, Manual and the new chair of the SPA uh, has sought to learn the lessons from the way in which that matter has uh, been handled. But the member should uh, uh, recognise that these were matters that were taken forward uh, in relation to the chief executive, the former chief executive's uh, package in relation to the SPA's existing early retirement scheme. Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Scottish Government promised in 2012 that police reform would achieve greater scrutiny of spending. Since then, Audit Scotland has reported for five years in a row on the poor use of taxpayer money, most recently £53,000 on paying an individual's taxes. Why doesn't the Government cut waste like this and those highlighted by Liam MacArthur rather than hiking the public's taxes? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the member uh, may wish to reflect on the nature of his question because the, relation in, the, the matter in relation to relocation expenses are issues of terms and conditions for police officers. If the member is suggesting that we should basically just tear up uh, the terms and conditions of police officers, that's another matter. And that's why the SPA have referred the issue to the Police Negotiating Board, which is the body that we established here in Scotland to consider these matters through due process unlike in England and Wales, where it was abolished and they no longer have a negotiating forum for that procedure. Uh, and that's why, and what the member should also recognise is that when he mentions that this is uh, for five years under uh, the uh, SPA and the creation of Police Scotland, is that the Auditor General in the report published last week highlights the significant progress that's been made over the course of the last year in improving the financial management within Police Scotland and within the SPA so there's greater transparency and accountability around that particular process. And I would have thought that's something that the member would wish to welcome. Claire Baker. Um, thank you, President Officer. The Auditor General has said that our audit identified a number of instances of poor governance and poor use of public money. This is unacceptable. There is no doubt following this report that John Foley has been rewarded for failure and with significant additional payments having been made. Can I ask who agreed the payments and can these payments be challenged at this stage? Cabinet Secretary. Absent officer, as I already mentioned, the uh, SPA former Chief Executive uh, retired under the terms of the Scottish Police Authority's early retirement uh, scheme uh, uh, rather than through an individual uh, settlement. That was a, an agreement which was reached between employee and employer, that is between Mr Foley and the Scottish Police Authority and it has to be approved by uh, the board. As such, the Scottish Government had no role in authorisation of the terms of the package. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that the addition of substantial uh, public service experience and indeed of government to the SPA will greatly enhance the oversight that it has over its responsibilities? And in particular, will he expect of the new chair that improvements will continue throughout the term of office and that quick fixes are to be suspect? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, I think it is worth uh, reiterating the point is that uh, the uh, report that came from uh, Audit Scotland last week does already demonstrate significant progress that's been moved, improved around uh, uh, overall governance and financial accountability within the police budget and also within the SPA budget. And this is uh, the first time where they have not modified uh, their, uh, uh, their accounts. And that recognises the progress that has been made in the accounting, the, trans accounting, the accountability and the transparency within that process. And as the new chair of the SPA has already set out that she intends to address the issues that have been raised by uh, by Audit Scotland in this report to ensure that they drive forward further improvement around these issues and to learn the lessons where they can be learned. I've got no doubt that Susan Deacon in her appointment uh, will bring considerable leadership to the organisation uh, and skill that she's gained from her term 
uh, within this parliament and also within the public sector and within the private sector over recent years. And alongside that, Kenneth Hogg, as the new uh, Chief Officer within, Police Scotland, uh, within the Scottish Police Authority, brings considerable experience from the public sector and in transformation of public agencies. So I have no doubt that both of them will bring considerable leadership to the organisation and I think members should be reassured by their commitment in order to learn the lessons and to address the issues that have been highlighted in this year's Audit Scotland report. Thank you. I'm going to thank the Cabinet Minister and all members for their participation. The next item of business is a debate in the name of Marie Todd. Motion number 9498. We'll just take a few moments for ministers to change seats.